Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in unit two, differentiation, the definition and basic derivative rules. Today we're in the last lesson of chapter two, topic 2.10, finding the derivatives of tangent of x, cotangent of x, secant of x, and cosecant of x functions. Enjoy today's notes. All right, for our last lesson of chapter two, this is section 2.10, derivatives of tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant functions. As we talked about earlier in this chapter, there are just a lot of derivative rules that we need to have memorized. Um, and so we're gonna round out chapter two by uh, doing the six basic trig functions. Now, some of these we already talked about, right? We know that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And we know that the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. You might remember that we made this, uh, you know, sort of sort of nice circle to go around, saying that you know the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x, the derivative of negative sine of x is negative cos x, and then it goes back around. And so each of these steps going around is just another derivative. We can take the derivative as many times as we need. Uh, for sine and for cosine. So sine and cosine have that cool relationship where they, they end up just sort of like op alternating signs when we do that. There are four other basic trig functions that we know from our trig review chapter. Tangent of x, cotangent of x, secant of x, and cosecant of x. Um, just sort of a key for these, these are derivatives that the AP exam, so the AP exam, College Board, expects you to memorize. They expect you to memorize these along with our other derivative rules. Now, some of these can be derived using a various, some various techniques, but in general, you know, as I mentioned earlier in the chapter, uh, my AP Calculus students that have been successful in the past have made uh, flashcards to try to make sure that they're memorizing these. If we take these AP exams in person, uh, you're gonna need to know them. They're gonna pop up, you know, whether it's on the multiple choice or the free response part of the exam. So let's get into it. What is the definition of the derivative of tangent of x? Uh, that is going to be secant squared of x. The derivative of cotangent of x is negative cosecant squared of x. The derivative of secant of x is, interestingly enough, secant x times tan of x. And the derivative of cosecant of x is negative cosecant x times cotangent x. Now, I've been really intentional about pairing these up. Uh, they're pretty much in pairs vertically, right? Sine and cosine are, have, are related. Tan and cotangent are related. They both have these like squareds on here. And then we also see uh, secant and cosecant are paired up in that the derivative of secant has secant of x and then tan of x, and then cosecant also has cosecant of x, but cotangent of x instead of tan. So if you pair these up, you can do a little bit of work in order to help you memorize these if you know which ones match up. Another really uh, interesting thing to notice that's, that's definitely valuable to notice is if the uh, trig function, if the trig function starts with a C, the derivative is negative. The derivative function is negative. What does that mean? Let's check this out. Cosine, uh, right, that starts with a C, notice it's got a negative sine of x. Derivative of cotangent starts with a C is negative. The derivative of cosecant of x is negative. So certainly if you were trying to like eliminate particular values or to help uh, memorize these, uh, I always remember that if the trig function starts with a C, the derivative function is negative. That is a super important thing and useful thing to help you memorize these values. In general, common struggles for, for students dealing with trig der derivatives Right, memorizing them, right? That's a, that's a key piece. You gotta know them if you're gonna be able to use them. You know, if a problem comes up that involves secant of x and you don't know the derivative rule for it, it's gonna be really tough to move forward and to finish off a, a particular problem. So memorizing them is a huge, huge thing. Unit circle values, right? We did all of that trig review. Um, you know, we, we wanna make sure that we know uh, our unit circle values because, um, you know, on that no calculator section, it is fair game for them to ask you uh, like 
trigonom trigonometric uh, functions uh, in radians. Uh, and you should be able to use your unit circle to reason and figure out what sine and cosine and tangent are, and then hopefully figure out cosecant, secant, and cotangent uh, as well. Um, we should be able to simplify and manipulate trig expressions. An example of that is, you know, sometimes you might be, you know, working through a problem, you might get something like sine of x times 1 over cosine of x. And you might uh, say, okay, well, I did this work. I got this answer, I got sine of x times 1 over cosine of x, and then you're looking at a multiple choice problem and you're like, man, none of these are, uh, are the answer. I don't, really, I don't really know which one to pick. Sometimes on the uh, you know, f multiple choice sections, they're expecting you to manipulate your answer in a certain way to find one of the, the answers. And so we should recognize that you know, we could rewrite this as sine of x over cosine of x, and at that point, we should hopefully remember that that's the same thing as tangent of x. So it's possible that they might put tan of x as one of the answer choices because it's equivalent to this expression, which we found here. So this is a subtle way for them to sort of test your trig knowledge on this AP calculus exam, which is again why we spent you know, that whole week and, and a lot of time uh, reviewing our trig values. Uh, the fourth one and the last one here is uh, students struggle with uh, doing trig reciprocals in a calculator. Right? If you take a look at your T83 or T84, we know that there are buttons for sine and cosine and tangent, but there are none for cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Right? There's no buttons. And so how, can we use the calculator to evaluate them? Yeah, we can, but we have to recognize and remember that cosecant of x, it, we have to remember what it's defined as, that it's the reciprocal of sine of x. So if I'm using my calculator and I needed to find cosecant of a particular value, on my calculator I'm actually typing in 1 divided by sine of x. Secant of x we know is 1 over cosine of x, and we know that cotangent is 1 over tan of x, or cosine of x divided by sine of x. Right? Either one of those would be uh, equivalent for this. So in general, if I were typing those special trig functions into the calculator, you know, we need to know what they're defined as to put them into our calculator. We can't just, you know, there are no buttons for it. So um, if we're going to use our calculators, we need to know what they mean. Great. So let's get into number one. Number one, uh, find the derivative of y equals sine of x times tangent of x. I notice here that uh, sine of x is being multiplied by tangent of x. And so because of this, this is like two different functions, right? Sine of x times tangent of x. So this is sort of screaming at me that I should be using the product rule for this. I need to use the product rule because there's multiplication going on with these two functions. Um, for this particular one, you know, we're going to set up that product rule. Let's say that y prime is going to be equal to uh, the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x times tan of x plus sine of x times the derivative of tan, which we uh, saw up here was secant squared of x for that one. Now we could potentially simplify, again, if this were a free response section, this is a totally acceptable place to stop. Uh, but again, you know, it might be, you know, it might be useful for, for some simplification to occur. You know, for example, if, again, if this were multiple choice, I might you know, recognize that cosine of x times tan, tan is defined as sine over cosine of x. So I could actually simplify this because those cosine of x's would cancel out. So a different way that we could write this answer would be sine of x plus sine of x secant squared of x. And if we needed to go a step further, we could notice that they both have sines of x's. And we could factor out and say that this is sine of x times 1 plus secant squared of x. So really, these, this value here is equivalent to this, which is equivalent to that. Any of those three uh, would be you know, an acceptable answer on a multiple choice. Um, it's just sort of using our definitions of trig values to manipulate the answers and find the one that we need. Let's get into number two. Number two, we've got, uh, we want to find f prime of pi over 6 if f of x is equal to x over secant x. First off, I am looking at this and I'm seeing that there's a numerator and denominator, so I'm thinking probably we're going to use the quotient rule for this particular problem. Um, and we also recognize here that we're going to need uh, pi over 6, so we're going to have some trig functions here that we're going to be doing some pi over 6, but let's, uh, let's do it. So 
as we normally do with our quotient rule, I would identify, uh, I would call my top function f of x. So that function in the numerator is x, and the derivative of that x is just 1, all right, using that power rule. g of x is that function in the denominator, that is secant x. And if we go back up to the top, the derivative of secant x is secant times tan. So g prime of x is secant x tan x. Nice. So this is my side work. I'm going to need this in my quotient rule. Um, and so we're going to say that f prime of x, the derivative here, if we remember from our quotient rule, let's, I'm going to write that out here sort of first so we can, uh, we can remember it. That's going to be g of x times f prime of x minus our f of x times g prime of x, all divided by g of x squared. So I'm going to now just sort of substitute in, right? These values over here are going to go into this equation, sort of right there. Um, and so what do we have? Well, we have that f prime of x is equal to secant x times 1 minus f of x, which is x, times g prime of x, which is our secant x times tan of x. And that's being divided by our denominator squared, so secant squared of x. So that is our uh, derivative function for f of x. So this is our derivative function. They're asking us not just the derivative, but they're asking us the derivative when x is equal to pi over 6. So if we're going to do that, we uh, are going to want to know the values of pi over 6. And so I'm going to go do some more side work over here. Let's do this in, uh, in green. I'm going to draw my little unit circle. Right, because for me, I'm not doing this without a, with a calculator. So here's my unit circle. I know that pi over 6 is about right there, that this is uh, about pi over 6. And I remember from my unit circle that this coordinate here is the square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. So seeing that I'm going to need some secants and some tans, uh, I remember that secant is defined as 1 over cosine of x. So secant of pi over 6 is going to be the same thing as 1 over the cosine of pi over 6. And that is going to be, if we take a look, we know that cosine from our unit circle is the x value of the coordinate. So this is going to be 1 over the square root of 3 over 2. And so 1 over the square root of 3 over 2 is going to make, we're going to essentially take the reciprocal of that. That's going to be equal to 2 over the square root of 3 or 2 root 3 over 3. For that. So that's secant. Uh, and we're going to need that, you know, clearly in some places here in our uh, equation. Uh, we also appear to need tangent of x. So I want to remind you that tangent of a value, the way that we use our unit circle to do that is it is the sine value divided by the cosine at that same value. So our sine is the x coordinate. And so that's going to be what? One half and the cosine is root three over two. So our over twos cancel each other out, and so we're left with one over root three or root three over three, uh, if we wanna rationalize that denominator. Okay, so I had a bunch of side work here. This is all stuff I'm gonna be able to use uh, as I plug in. But to get back to this particular one, uh, I want to be smart in evaluating this. And, and when I say smart, I notice here that each of these terms in the numerator and denominator have a secant x. They all have a secant x, which means I can actually factor a secant x out and cancel. And so what do we have if we do that? We've got f prime of x is going to be equal to 1 minus x times tan of x divided by secant x. Again, notice that I was able to factor and divide out a secant x from here, a secant x from here, and one of my secants from the denominator. This is what's left over. So if I want to do uh, then f prime of pi over 6, we're going to plug in. This is going to be 1 minus pi over 6 times tan of pi over 6, all divided by secant of pi over 6. And 
for us, we've already evaluated what tan of pi over 6 is. We said that that was root 3 over 3. We said secant of pi over 6 is uh, 2 root 3 over 3. Um, and so let's, uh, let's simplify. So this is going to be 1 minus pi over 6 times, we said tan of pi over 6 was root 3 over 3. And then we're going to divide by secant of pi over 6. I'm going to leave it as this 2 over root 3, even though these are equivalent to each other. So 2 over root 3. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because we know when we divide by a fraction that I could just multiply by the reciprocal. So a little bit of an easier way for us to evaluate this would be to say, okay, I've got 1 minus uh, this root 3 pi over 18 times, right, the reciprocal of, of uh, 2 over root 3, so that's going to be root 3 over 2. And so if we do that, that's going to be equal to the square root of 3 over 2, because we're going to have to distribute to both of these things, uh, minus 3 pi over 36, or root 3 over 2 minus pi over 12. This would be the exact answer for that first problem. Definitely a longer one. Uh, had to use a lot of prior knowledge, right? We had to know how to do the quotient rule in order to set this one up. We had to know our trig values so that we could find secant of pi over 6 and tangent of pi over 6. And then we had to do our algebra to simplify and find the answer for problem number 2. All right, last one for today is going to be problem number three. Problem number three says to estimate the derivative with a calculator of g of x is equal to cosecant squared of 4x at x equals 2. So the key piece for this, we're going to demo this on our calculator here in a second, but the key piece is for us to remember that we know that cosecant is 1 over the sine of x. So if I want cosecant squared, the way that I'm going to need to type this into my calculator is going to be actually sine of 4x quantity squared in that denominator. So these are equivalent to each other, but your calculator is able to do this one while the calculator doesn't know what cosecant is. So I want to remind you, you know, we, we can use our calculator to evaluate a derivative at a specific x value by hitting math and then 8 to use this n deriv uh, feature. So that's what we're about to use. Let's check that out on our calculator. Our t 3 t 4 uh, if we want to evaluate this cosecant uh, squared of 4x, um, again, we're going to go to math and then 8, right? So hitting that n derivative, because they're asking us to take the derivative of this function. We're taking the derivative with respect to x. And our function here, I'm going to hit, because uh, we want cosecant, and there's no cosecant button, right? That's not the same thing as like any of these things here. We have sine, cosine, tangent, but none of these reciprocal trig functions. We're going to say that cosecant is 1 divided by this sine of, uh, what, 4x? Sine of 4x quantity squared. So sine of 4x quantity squared. Uh, and that's, notice here, all in the denominator. Uh, of this of this one. So uh, even though this says sine of 4x squared, we know that 1 over sine is cosecant, and so this is going to be an equivalent function, as long as we know uh, those reciprocal trig functions. And they're asking us to do that when x is equal to 2, um, and so if we do that, we get that this is about 1.201999. If this rounds, we're going to say this is about 1.202, because uh, again, we round after to three digits after the decimal place. All right, so great. We were able to use our calculator to see that the derivative of cosecant squared of 4x at x equals 2 is about 1.202 if we round to three digits after the decimal place. That's going to be it for today's notes. We've got a bunch of practice problems for you to try, some test prep. Uh, as usual, the solutions to those are posted. Check those out and then go do your mastery check. I hope you have a fantastic day. Good luck and take care.